Have you ever wondered how silver is produced? Well, let's embark on a journey through time and across continents to unravel the intriguing story of silver, one of the earliest precious metals known to humanity. Despite its reactivity, which made it trickier to mine than gold, silver has always held a special place in human history due to its rarity and the challenges associated with its extraction. Our story takes us back to a time when silver was highly valued for its scarcity and difficulty in extraction. But don't let that fool you into thinking it was just a shiny trinket. No no, silver was also a heavyweight in the realm of currency and played a pivotal role in ceremonial practices. Fast forward to the present and thanks to advancements in technology, silver mining has become more accessible. But while we have managed to harness its production, silver remains one of the most prized elements in the world. It's a bit like the popular kid in school, everyone wants a piece of it. From currency to jewelry and even chemical processes, silver has certainly earned its stripes. But here's the kicker. Despite being relatively abundant and less expensive compared to other precious metals, the demand for silver is so high that estimates suggest we have a mere 20 years until we exhaust all extractable resources. Talk about being in high demand. The silver story takes an interesting turn when we consider consumption. India, known for its love of all things sparkly, is the largest consumer of silver, consuming a significant chunk of global production. And where does all this silver come from, you might wonder? Well, it's a global effort with Mexico, Peru, the US, Canada, and Chile being the major players in silver mining. So now that we've set the stage, it's time to dive into the nitty-gritty of the fascinating process of silver production. From mining to manufacturing and finally reaching your hands, this is a journey you won't want to miss. So buckle up and stay tuned. Let's dive into the fascinating process of silver production. Silver, in its purest form, is called native silver, but it's rare to find it in this form. Now don't get your hopes up, because stumbling upon a chunk of native silver while on your morning stroll is about as likely as discovering a unicorn in your backyard. Yes, it's that rare. Most commonly, silver is found within a variety of mineral ores. These are not as glamorous as the pure silver you might be imagining, but they are still quite fascinating. Let's take a quick stroll through the silver mineral gallery, shall we? First we have argentite, a dark gray or black mineral. Though it may not look like much, argentite is a major source of silver. Then we have serargerite, also known as horn silver due to its horn-like structure. This mineral is light-sensitive and darkens when exposed to sunlight, a bit of a vampire one might say. Stephanite, another significant source of silver, is a sulfantimonide mineral. This one is usually black or dark gray and has a metallic luster. Finally, we have chlorargyrite, another light-sensitive mineral that comes in a variety of delightful colors, from colorless to yellow, and even purple when heated. Now you might be wondering why not just dig up these minerals and get the silver out? Well, it's not that simple. Silver is tricky to extract and these minerals are not exactly lying around in heaps. Miners often have to process vast quantities of material to yield even modest amounts of silver. It's a bit like trying to find a needle in a haystack, only the haystack is a mountain and the needle is microscopic. But don't despair, the effort is well worth it. Silver, though it may be elusive, is highly valued for its rarity and wide range of applications. It remains one of the most sought-after elements in the world. Now let's talk about where most of our silver comes from. I promise it's not from a secret stash of pirate treasure, though that would be exciting, wouldn't it? Silver mining occurs worldwide, but did you know that some countries are leading the pack? The silver mining leaderboard features a diverse mix of countries, each contributing their fair share to the global silver supply. First up, we have Mexico, a country rich in mineral resources that shines brightly as the world's top silver producer. Not far behind is Peru, another heavyweight in the silver mining ring, combining rich ore deposits with centuries-old mining traditions. Next we have the United States where the silver state of Nevada alone contributes significantly to the country's silver output. Meanwhile our northern neighbor Canada remains a substantial contender, boasting numerous productive silver mines, and let's not forget Chile, where the mineral-rich Andean mountains provide ample opportunities for silver extraction. For all you silver jewelry enthusiasts out there, these countries are akin to Santa's workshop churning out gleaming presents year-round, next up we'll discuss how silver is actually extracted. Silver extraction commonly employs two methods, open pit and underground mining. Let's play a game of spot the difference, shall we? In the left corner we have open pit mining, the heavyweight champion of large-scale operations. This method involves digging a vast pit into the Earth's surface to extract silver from mineral ores such as lead, zinc, and copper. But don't be fooled by its size. 
It's a bit like fishing in the ocean with a net and hoping to catch a seahorse. The silver concentrations in these ores are often low, which means we need to process a lot of material to get a decent amount of silver. Think of it like looking for a needle in a haystack, except the haystack is a mountain and the needle is a shiny, precious metal. Explosives come into play in this method, used strategically to fragment rock. After the big boom, the shattered rock is collected and transported to processing facilities. It's a bit like making a smoothie, except instead of fruits and yogurt we're blending rocks and minerals. Now, onto the right corner we have underground mining, the nimble agile contender. This method aims for the higher concentrations of silver hidden deep within the earth. It's like finding a secret treasure chest buried under your house. But instead of a map, miners use intricate tunneling operations to reach these precious veins of silver. Vertical or horizontal tunnels known as adits are dug to facilitate ore extraction. Advanced machinery aids transportation and ventilation, making the process a bit less strenuous and a way more efficient industrial operation. Both methods have their strengths and weaknesses like two sides of the same shiny silver coin. But regardless of the method used, the goal remains the same, to extract as much of this precious metal as possible. Once the silver ore is extracted, it's time for processing. Processing is where we'll dive into the world of crushing, milling and leaching. Processing begins with crushing and milling, reducing ore to a fine powder. Now you might be thinking, hey I crush and mill my coffee beans each morning, how different can this be? Well it's a tad more complex I assure you. After our ore has been ground down to a consistency finer than your morning latte, it's time for the next stage. Depending on the composition of the ore, it's either off to the flotation tanks or the cyanide leaching vats. Yes, you heard right, cyanide. But don't worry, it's not as sinister as it sounds. Froth flotation is quite the spectacle. Think of it as a giant hot tub party for our ore, where the silver particles get separated from the unwanted gang. They're the life of the party, floating to the top while the rest sinks to the bottom. On the other hand, cyanide leaching is more like a silver spa treatment. Here, silver compounds get pampered in a cyanide bath until they dissolve for easy extraction. It's a relaxing day out for our silver but perhaps not for the spa attendants. Once our silver has been separated, it's time for the purification process. This involves chemical treatments, smelting, and refining. Imagine it as a beauty regimen for our silver. It goes through a cleanse, a hot steam or rather smelt and then a refining treatment. The result? Silver that's so pure it would make a skincare guru green with envy. In fact the purity levels can sometimes exceed 99.9%. That's purer than the intentions of a golden retriever seeing a tennis ball. But our silver's journey doesn't end here. With the silver purified, it's cast into ingots or bars. The casting process is like the grand finale of a reality TV show. It's a dramatic transformation from raw silver to polished bars, ready to step onto the world stage. And then, it's off to the races. The silver is distributed to various industries and consumers worldwide. From your grandmother's cherished necklace to the latest tech gadgets, this shiny metal finds its way into our lives, leaving a little sparkle wherever it goes. It's clear that the process of silver production is a complex one. From its humble beginnings in the Earth's crust as native silver, or within mineral ores such as argentite and chlorogyrite, silver's journey to our hands is a testament to human ingenuity. Despite the rarity of its native form, we've devised methods to mine and extract it often as a byproduct of other metal operations. Our search for silver takes us across the globe, to places like Mexico, Peru, the US, Canada, and Chile. We've developed two main methods of extraction, open pit and underground mining, each with its unique challenges and rewards. But the journey doesn't end there. The silver then undergoes rigorous crushing, milling and purification processes, including froth flotation and cyanide leaching, to ensure it achieves the desired purity levels. After all that effort, it's no wonder we cherish silver in our jewelry, currency and chemical processes. And that folks, is the fascinating journey of silver from the earth to your jewelry box.